Hello, Hamid. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good. Were you able to finish all the samples or are still working? I'm still working on them. The other one? Emma? Uh, let me check with her. Okay. Hello. 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 Hey, Emma. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. All right, shall we proceed? Yes. All right. One to one tapping in Hibernate by yeah. two ways. So one to one tapping in Hibernate can be done two ways. One is by many to one element and one to one element. That is, these two are tags. Okay. Yes. And here uh, we are going to perform one to one mapping by many to one element. So, what happens uh, when you perform uh, this one to one mapping using many to one element and using one to one element? When you use many to one okay. element, a foreign key is created in the primary table. That is the difference. So, uh -huh. with uh, one way that is with many to one element, a foreign key would be generated. Whereas with the one to one element, there will not be any such foreign key. That is the main difference. Okay. Okay. So in this element, uh, one example uh, that is the scenario what we are considering is one employee can have only one address, and one address belongs to only one employee. Okay. Got it? So from the employee, the employee to address, one employee having one address. From address okay. perspective, one ad in one address only one employee is residing. Yes. Okay. And okay. we are using a special association called as bidirectional association. So with this type of uh, thing is known as bidirectional association. That is from employee perspective as well as address perspective. Okay. 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 And so here uh, there are uh, persistent classes like employee and address. So here you can see employee class is having employee ID, uh, name, and email ID. Okay. Yes. Okay. And there is 
an entity reference to address. Got it? One yeah. employee would be having one address. So there is one yeah. one employee address reference in the employee entity. Likewise, in address, there is uh, address ID uh, uh, that is address line, city, state, country, pin code, yeah. and you can see from address perspective there is one reference to employee. Got it? Yeah. yeah. Let's let's do that. Let me write a. Uh, uh, those two classes. Which uh, demo eight? Finish. And yes, I need Hibernate configuration as well as this uh, HBM XML. Yes. I'll come and put in source. And I'll configure the project with my build path. Yeah. yeah. Add library. User library. Hibernate. Finish. OK. And in my source, I'll create a okay. employee class. So employee entity class in a package, the regular package which we use. Yeah. I will need demos. Yes, in the employee class, I have private name. name, right. Sorry. Email ID. Yeah. And for this, we get a sun setters. Yeah. Yes. I'm done with this. And also, we need to have a reference to address, right? Right. So I say. Address. Right. And address class we don't have. So create. create. Yeah. Address class in the same package. Same package. Mm -hmm. Right. Now in this address class, I'll embed. And before that address class, let me generate address and address for this address in employee. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done with that. And these are properties. Yes. And these are the other one. And with address. Address ID. String. Street. And private string city string state, state string code country and pin code. Yeah. Pin code. And I need setters and getters for these as well. So I'll write here. I'll write here having a reference to 
address. Likewise, we have a reference to employee. Right? Yes. Right. So that we can perform one to one mapping. Yeah. Right. So yes. for this, we will generate a front data. Mm -hmm. So generate data sunset. Yes, I am done with the two uh, model classes. Yeah. And in my so I need that hibernate test client. I'll copy this. Yes. Paste it. And in this there are those uh, things which we used with our previous sample and I'll clear them. Okay. Right. Yeah. And this is for fetching. So I'll comment it. Yeah. Now let me get into config. Yes. In config. We have a resource, so employee HBM, right? Right. Yeah. Similarly, for address. Yeah. So we need to write these two files also. Address. And let me oh. consider the question HBM and rename it. Yeah. to employee HBM. Right? Employee. Right. Okay. And similarly, I'll copy this question HBM again into my source and okay. rename it to address. Okay. 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 address. Right. Now let's take one one employee HBM and we need to provide mappings for this employee HBM. So the class name would be employee class, right? Right. Of course, ID, property name, property names we need to mention. So the properties in employee are, and they are, let me open this employee. So it is employee ID, we are, employee ID is ID. So I'll do that ID. It's not question ID, it's employee ID. And when you go to property, yeah. it is employee name, Right, and I'll copy this. I have email ID, right? Yes. I'll copy this, and I mention email ID. You better copy paste the properties. Do not type. Yes. Okay. Because if okay. you type, there may be a chance typo errors may occur. Okay. Okay. And okay. Let me remove this. And I don't have any of this. Okay? Yeah, right. okay. And here, let me go back to mapping files. So here, 
uh, we have done with uh, class mapping for entity class employee and you can see here there is a reference to address object in our employee entity class right right so I am mentioning uh, the many to one relationship here that's what we are performing one to one mapping with the help of many to one element okay yes I am okay. mapping with to one element in the class here mm -hmm. and it has uh, yes so along with these properties I have many to one so the many to one it is, it is to address is right yes and it is cascade with all with and with we can mark it as unique I mean address should be unique right okay okay true so, right that's what mm, foreign key column right yeah right so I'm done with this now let us go to address SBM and uh, define the properties for address okay yes and let me open that address yes address has been I open yeah. and in this I need to mention address address okay, okay. and the, this is address ID I'll copy this to address address ID and we have properties so we have street city state pin code country right yeah so i'll copy each street street then okay. state state then next property uh, city then state then country pin code yeah. and let me put another property and it is pin code yeah. so pin code spelling right look it was pin course C E A yeah. type. So let me change it to so I changed all the getters and setters, pin code, and you can see this one. better I'll generate getters and setters because if something goes wrong with generate and generating getters and setters yeah. again it will throw yeah. an error yes so better generate this right and I don't need this and I don't need this yes yeah I'm done with the address HBM. So when you are performing, uh, here we are performing one to one relationship. One employee mm -hmm. having one address. Yes. Uh, and here we can perform it in two, uh, two ways using many to one element and one to one element. So I am yeah. using yeah. many to one element here. When you um, use one to many to one element, uh, it is enough to use that many to one element with uh, either uh, address, uh, I mean I, either uh, employee. employee or address. Mm -hmm. So okay. that is why you can see here 
there is no many to many mapping here with address because okay. one one many to one element would be would be doing enough okay okay then okay. i'm going to hibernate test client uh, let me change this title to our title this one right now let me create address objects employee okay. objects okay so okay. i create address this address to so this address one dot set so street okay yeah so i say street one yeah set city i say city 1 then same address 1 dot set state set uh right state so i say state one address one dot set country country uh, is country one and set pin code pin code or zip code in india we call it as pin code zip code oh, okay here they call it a uh, zip code yeah yeah that's what right. mm -hmm. postal index number code it is pin pin stands for postal index number mm -hmm. code is nothing but yeah, it's a number numeric yeah. so it would be like something like 6006 Mm -hmm. Okay. So based upon based upon the country region, yeah. so it will be okay. Now I'm done with address, and I will create an employee object. Okay. <coughs> employee object. Now, to this employee object. Mm -hmm. Set employee yeah, name. Mm. So I say Emma. Mm -hmm. And to this employee one, the email ID. Email. Yeah. Some email ID. Okay. Yes. Emp one dot set address. Address, yeah. And this address one, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yes, I'm done. I'm going to save my employee object. You go on. Right. Right. Now, uh, I'm executing this. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm executing. duplicate property mapping of country found in address i think let me open that one. sql query browser connected to my sql and i'll do 
select star from address. Yes, I have an address table. Okay. I already have an employee table. So that's what it is troubling. So what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll delete from employee. Likewise, delete from address. Address. And I'll go for executing our program. Okay. Yes. Still duplicate and mapping found for address. Duplicate property mapping of country. So, oh, the data did not delete from address. Delete, oh, delete, it is not delete star, it is delete from. Cannot delete a Delete or update a parent row. Okay. So first I need to do delete from employee. Okay. That's what. Yeah. Okay. And oh, I delete address. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Now the data is deleted. Now mm -hmm. I'll go back and execute this. Okay. Okay. I will just and do select star from address. Yes, there is nothing. And select star from the employee. There is nothing. Okay, now let us see. So there is still exception duplicate entry mapping of country found in my address class. So let us see the address class. So country, yes, there is one country. And let us see my HBM XML file for address. Yes, that's what. Yeah. I have to put a pin code, right? Yeah. So I just copied that property and I did not change it to pin code. Yes. Right. I'm done. Now I'll execute my test client. Okay. Yes, object save. And you can see two tables are generated. One yeah. address table and the other one is employee table. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So if you see there, let me open that address table here. So mm -hmm address. You can see over there, address ID 1 that is generated by Hibernate due yes. to that uh, generator value, okay? Yeah. Generator class. And street, city, pin code, state, country, okay? This is the address, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. And I go for employee. Employee. And you can see here, Employee ID 1 is generated due to Hibernate generator class, okay? Yes. And employee name Emma, her email ID, and you can see there is an entry for address in yeah. my employee table. Mm -hmm. So employee ID being the primary key in my employee table and address being the foreign key. Foreign key. Yeah. That is what? If we use many to one element, there will be uh, a foreign key uh, map put. I mean to say there will be an entry for the foreign key in the primary key table. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got it? Got it. And if you observe, if you observe, and here, first address table is inserted. Then employee table inserted. 
Can you find the reason? Because the employee class is the parent. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Employee class is parent. Yeah. Employee and class is parent or address class is parent? Employee class is parent. You are confused with the relationship. Yes. What you are saying is true, but in the employee and address class, which is parent and which is child? Oh. Yes. Think for a while. Meanwhile, I have to drop a mail regarding my next session. Think for a while and give me the answer. Okay. Keep thinking and I'll show you the clue here, which we already discussed and I, which I showed you. Yeah. Yes, this thing. I explained these things with the employee and department tables. Yeah. Yes, this is the clue. What you said is correct, I agree, but you told in a different way and I need a proper explanation, meaningful explanation. Yes, she said the employee is the parent. And yes, the she said employee is the parent. And the address is a child. Yes, but I said it is wrong, right? Parent-child relationship is correct, but you are telling in a different way. Now check that a foreign key is generated in which table, employee table or address table? In the employee table. So employee will be the parent table or child table then? Parent table. Parent table? Yeah. Just look at the notepad which I have done here. Mm -hmm. Yes. This I already explained you. Yeah. Look at the explanation and which, which table is a parent table and which table is a, a child table over there? The, um the department table yes, is but, uh, department table is is the parent right and in yeah. department table look at the columns and look at the child tables uh, columns yeah okay in the department uh, there is uh, this um uh, primary key, but in the employee we have the foreign key. Okay, and which table is depending on which table? The employee depends on the, the department. Right, so which table would be parent over there? 
the department with the parent. Then we, you go back to employee and address tables. In our example, yeah, now you the tell address me which is the parent. parent. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Clear. Yeah, yes. Clear. Right, right, right. Don't get confused. Okay. 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 That's what I want to highlight over there. Mm -hmm. So address being the parent table. Okay. And okay. why? Why? And I I want a reason why address is inserted first and then employee is inserted. Do you mean? Yes. Because the the address is the parent. Uh, address is parent. I agree. I want mm -hmm. a meaningful explanation. Yeah, I yes. think in order to map the right the address, right, the right, address right, to right, the employee right, who have right, the first right, of all right. house. Right. The information so, of the address. Right. When address table is uh, inserted, address ID would be inserted by the Hibernate, right? Yes. Yeah. I want this address ID when inserting data into employee, right? Yes. Yeah. That is why address is being inserted and then employee. Okay. Got it? Got it. Got it. Right. Right. Uh, just a moment, I am composing a mail. I will be sending it to my other students. Okay. Right. Now, we will go for uh, the other example uh, that is performing the one-to-one -one mapping using one-to-one -one element. Okay? Okay. Okay. Yes, look here. So we have already done with a menu to one element. Um, yeah. And uh, and another thing I want to highlight before going, getting into that. So in my um, uh, employee HBM, mm -hmm. we mentioned cascade equals to all, right? Yes. What do you mean by that cascade equals to all? Again a queue, again a queue, this queue, again, again the clue. So I, yes, the same parent uh, that is the employee department table and I explained here about that cascade. Yeah, yesterday you say that um, if for example we, we want to delete uh, the child or we want right. to modify something in the child table, we first need, uh, we can do that by using cascade delete or cascade update so that you can modify it even without modifying first the, uh, the parent. Okay, while deleting, uh, come again properly. So you are deleting, first of all, so you have your parent child tables, now you are deleting data from? If you, you, you are deleting data from the child table. Again, if you are deleting data from child, uh, then? 
you can use cascade delete why, to do why, that. Why do why to go for a cascade delete over there? I can directly delete the data from parent from child. You can directly delete from data from child. You are get, uh, you are expressing in a wrong way. Oh, okay. Uh, we yeah. go for cascade when you can see here. Yes, observe here. I have highlighted, reset yeah. and come to a conclusion. Okay, we cannot delete data in the parent. Hmm. Because the reason is? Because uh, uh, the, um, the child has a reference to it. Right, got it? Yeah. So, even though there are references to child, if you want to delete uh, parent, then? You use cascade. Right, delete. got it? Got it. Pay, pay for update also, right? Update. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, what this cascade does is, whether you are inserting or updating or deleting, so do it by using that cascade, okay? Yes. Because there is primary key foreign key relationship over there. So, by default, database will uh, prevent, right? Because right. there is parent-child relationship, right? Right. So, even though there is, I want to do it cascade all. All in the sense, either it is an insert or update or delete. Got it? Got it. Right. right. Now, yes. Here. So we are going to perform one-to-one -one mapping using one-to-one -one element. In such a case, no foreign key is generated in the primary table. This is what? So there will not be a foreign key generated in the primary key table, employee table. And another thing I want to back, I want to back. Uh, Unique. I'll remove this. I'll remove this. I'll remove this, okay? Okay. I save this. I save this and I go back to my Hibernate test client and I execute this. Mm, there is some, uh, what is that? Ex uh, exception. Read that exception. So object, yes. object reference, object reference as an unsaved transient instance. Save the transient instance before flushing address. Mm -hmm. So what it is saying is, you can see over there, I deliberately removed that, uh, uh, what is that? Cascade. Cascade all in my employee HBM file, right? Right. And we know that uh, employee model class is having a reference to address entity, okay. right? Yes. And if you observe over there in our Hibernate test client, we are saving employee object alone, not the address. Even yeah. though address is a separate entity. Yes. So address is an entity referring inside employee class, right? Right. Right. So yeah, uh, as address is another entity, address is supposed to be saved when employee object yeah. is saved, right? Yeah. Right. So. So, address is to be saved when employee object is saved. It means, saved in the sense, insert, right? Insert command, right? Right. right. So, when I use a cascade all, it was executing fine. Okay. When I removed cascade all, it means, when I removed cascade all, it is trying to insert employee data, but there is a reference to address entity, 
where that is also to be saved, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to save that, you need to tell Hibernate. So while saving my employee object, you save the address object also where employee is referring to that address. Got it? Got it. Got it. You are saying that through cascade all. Now you got it, the meaning of cascade. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what, right? Yeah. So I go back to the employee HBM and put this. Now it works. So that is the reason yesterday also we encountered the exception. Uh, I mean, I could not highlight that. Maybe I forgot, I, I skipped. So I thought of uh, highlighting this particular point and explained you. Okay? Okay. And, and whenever you are executing samples with Hibernate, please pay attention to the Hibernate throwing the SQL commands showing on the console. Look for the yeah. tables that are generated here, table names, column names, default column names, those things. Got it? Got it. And in the previous sample, we have seen address being inserted first, then parent, uh, parent sorry, then employee being inserted. Reason, parent-child relationship, and employee table is expecting an address ID, right? Right. 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 Yes, now, sir. Yes. What about the unique statement? Unique, unique equal to true. The values. Value should be unique in the address ID. It says address ID is the foreign key column that is embedded into my employee table, right? Right. right. If you say unique equals to true, then the foreign key column should be uh, having unique values over there. Got it? Ah, okay. Got it. Right. In database, you will mention, right, unique. The same thing yeah. here, unique equals to Boolean value true. All right? All right. All right. And, and so I will remove this unique equals to true, okay? And I will execute this hypertent test client with only cascade all, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, object is being inserted. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So when you insert the second object, it uh, the address ID should be unique. Suppose you are manually yeah. inserting assume. Mm -hmm. And over there, if you try to insert a duplicate element, then it will throw an error. Oh, yeah. So by default, the unique uh, the foreign key should be unique by default. So mm -hmm. mentioning this hibernator uh, unique, I mean to say this one, this one is nothing but the default operation itself you are mentioning. By default, yeah. the foreign key should be always unique or primary key, right? I told you, right? Right. That also I highlighted when I spoke about this uh, parent-child relationships. Yeah, I highlighted. Yes, okay. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So that's what this uh, parent child relationship in database uh, are uh, very important. You should be having complete knowledge on this uh, because uh, the interview questions would uh, fall on, on this particular uh, primary key parent uh, ch uh, child relationship. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Now, The same here, employee with address reference, address with employee reference, and the same employee HBM and address HBM. The thing is, we need to have a one-to-one -one element in parent, I mean to say, uh, the employee table as well as the address table. Okay? Address table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, whereas with the menu one, we could mention with any of the any of the table, maybe address yeah. or yeah. Employee, right? Yeah. Right. So I go back to my uh, employee. 
I'll do it with employee first. And here I'll comment this. So I'll write here use the below tag to perform one to one relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll comment this and I'll put here, I need one to one actually, there, now. One, one to one. So the above is one to one, to one right? Okay, and here one to one does not have this, so I remove, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. And Put this, put this in address. Address HBM. Right. And here, what property we are referring to? Employee. employee. I mean, in my address table, in my address table, this employee. Uh, Got yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, done, that's it. Oh. No more changes, okay? Okay. And I'll write here, I'll write it here. Mention one to one, one to one tag, element tag. Element tag on both the model classes. That is employee and address. Address. Okay. Yes, I'll comment this. I mentioned it only for explanation. Okay. Yeah. Now I execute this. Okay. Okay. Yes, could not parse mapping document resource address HBM. Oh, maybe tag something is missing. Yeah. Yes, class, okay. Oh. Employee. The name is employee or em employee. Mm -hmm. And in my employee, it is one to one address. Yes. And let me run this test client again. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let me show you the data present in the tables. So select staff from employee, okay. And mm -hmm. if you observe, there is no address ID here. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I go to address. Uh, this this is the second value. I mean second insertion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have to delete the data from this actually. Delete from address and delete from employee. I'll read on this, okay? Okay. Right. I'll read on this. And you can see my employee object is saved, then followed by address object is saved because there is no primary key foreign key relationship over there. Yes. Yeah. And if, if you observe, I am saving only employee object. Yes. Yeah. I am not saving the address object. I mean address object separately. But I have yeah. sent that address to my employee. Yes. yes. Right? Right. Yes. And I'll show you. Select. Yes. Observe there is no foreign key here. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, and select star from address. Okay. And there is no. I mean to say, uh, it's just the address table. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So here, there will not be any primary key, file key relationship when you go for one to one. One to one. Uh, element okay. to perform one to one relationship. Okay. All right. And this type of uh, mentioning one to one element in both model class as well as uh, what is that? Uh, model class uh, employee okay, as well as uh, address class is a bidirectional mapping. So the thing is, the thing is, you can obtain the address of an employee using employee dot get address, right? Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. From the address, uh, you can get the employee, right? Get employee from address mm. address one dot. Okay. Can you or not? Obviously, you can get right because there is a reference. Yeah. yeah. So that is what bidirectional mapping means. You can okay. get the object from one class, uh, the other object, okay. and from the other class, you can get the object of the uh, associated uh, class. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. So that's what. And if you observe, uh, I did not uh, uh, execute this uh, uh, displaying the data from the table. I executed once, if you remember, right? Right. Uh, and I used a create query and a from create from question. I mean to say from model class. From model class. Yeah. yeah. So which result the list of uh, I mean to say. Uh, a query is created and from that list, that is list of results given by that uh, from question table, right? Yes. Right. So I just uh, uh, did not execute because it's simple thing. I want you to execute uh, for all the uh, uh, samples which you are working. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please execute this for all the samples. It is just from the model class, that's it, okay? Yeah. Okay. And you can observe here, from uh, employee you can get address, and from address you can get employee. Mm, which yeah. is a sample which we executed today. You can yes. uh, check that also, okay? Okay. Yeah. And, good. I will... Transaction management. Uh, of course, I already told you this, but still we are looking into that. Okay. So here, uh, transaction represents a unit of work, right? Okay. Okay. So some amount of work to be done, right? Right. So here, that amount of work is represented by an SQL statement in DBMS. Maybe single SQL statement or maybe multiple SQL statements. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's what here. A transaction simply simply represents some unit of work. In such a case, that is, if one step fails, the whole transaction should be failing. That is mm -hmm. what atomicity means. Have you heard of this atomicity okay. rule? Yeah. Acid properties. Have you heard? What? AC Acid properties. AC Acid no. properties. No, is it I related to database? Okay. Oh, is it? No, definitely you might have gone through your academics for sure. If you have gone through DVMS subject in your academics, without this acid properties, DVMS subject is uh, not full. It is incomplete. Uh, oh. Definitely you will be addressing this. So keeping your database consistent, you can see here atomicity, that is, uh, suppose if uh, you are performing a transaction, there may be 10 SQL statements in the transaction. Mm -hmm. Assume any one SQL statement is failing, then the whole transaction should fail. That is, uh, do complete or do nothing. Got it? Okay. Got it. That is what atomicity is. Okay. 
Okay. Then yeah. consistency, isolation, durability, all these are database properties. Got it. So as acid. So you can see if you Google out here. I'll just write. Acid properties. Yes. It's in Wikipedia also. Atomicity, consi consistency. Yes. Atomicity. You can see at the phrase all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. It means all the SQL statements uh, in a transaction. So generally in database, transaction is represented by SQL statement. So yes. execute all the statements are nothing. nothing. There are ten SQL statements, nine executed and one is failing. Then uh, revert all those things. Yeah. Okay. That's what all or nothing. Okay. Then consistency. Consistency of the acid property ensures that any changes to values in an instance are consistent with the changes to other values in the same instance. So a consistent constraint is a predicate to on data which serves as a precondition, post condition and transformation condition. Okay, the thing is when you make changes to your data, uh, maybe, uh, so maybe like uh, uh, let's see, maybe they have given some other examples with the consistency ensures. Define rules. Uh, no. There is no proper explanation here. Okay, okay, okay. So consistency. Uh, consistency means, uh, for example, uh, you have fetched some data from a table. And you know well that uh, uh, the SQL data, whatever you are performing, uh, it executes on buffer, not on the original table. Yeah. The, okay. the changes that you are performing to your database would be affecting your database only when you execute commit statement, right? Yes. Yeah. So here, assume you fetched some data from a table and you modified the data where not in the database outside in your java layer okay yeah. okay and whatever you modified the data in your java layer has to be reflected in the database also right of course right. if it is not reflecting it means that uh, the data present in the database is different and the data present mm -hmm. with your java layer is different then right yeah right there will not be consistency right right mm -hmm. So you need to maintain the consistency and here maintaining the consistency with Hibernate is uh, taken care by Hibernate. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. That is what, uh, what is it? Consistency is and atomicity I just explained to you, all are none, okay? Yes. Yeah. And isolation, you can see here, isolation will ensure that uh, transactions are securely and independently processed at the time without reference. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But it does not ensure the order of transactions. They have given some example. Let us read the example. Mm-hmm. User A withdraws hundred dollars, and user B withdraws a two fifty from user Z's account. Okay, there mm-hmm. is a user A B Z. Z is having an account, and A is drawing hundred, and B is drawing two fifty from Z account. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So Z is having a balance of thousand at the initial time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Since both A and B are from Z's account, okay, mm-hmm. one of the users is required to wait until the other transaction is completed. Yes. Yeah. To avoid inconsistent data. Mm-hmm. Right. So if one yes. user is drawing, then the other user should wait because. The balance available should be updated, right? Of course, yes. yes. For sure. So if B is required to wait, then B must wait until A's transaction is complete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Z's account balance changes to 900 then after A's transaction, right? 100 yeah. drawn, 100 dollars drawn. Now yeah. we can mm-hmm. withdraw, withdraw 250 from available 900. Mm-hmm. Or else yeah. it will lead to inconsistent data, right? Right. Yes. So the transactions should run isolated, isolated, right? Separately, independently, mm-hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Right. That is what isolation is. And durability. So in the above example, user may withdraw 100 only after, sorry, user B is drawing 100 dollars only after yes transaction is completed and is updated in the database. And if the system fails before yes transaction is logged into the database, got it? Got it. The user B has drawn 100 and thus has to be reflected in the database. Before reflection, the database has crashed or something happened. Okay? Okay. System yeah. fails. And A cannot withdraw any money. A cannot withdraw any money and Z's account returns to its previous consistent state. Then during that time, uh, it should not allow to, uh, what is that, B to draw that 100, okay? Okay. Durability, okay? Okay. So that is what the acid properties are. I will copy this and put in notepad for your reference. Yeah. All these are database uh, concepts, DBMS concepts, database management system concepts. That is why I told you two, three weeks ago to brush up all the database related things. Okay. Yeah, we did. More you have to, okay. Yeah, that's for sure. Alright, that's what. When talking about transaction, uh, you need to address these acid properties of the database. You don't need to address, they are taken care by the database actually, okay? Okay. And while, and what is that? Uh, I mean, they are taken care by the database and uh, Oh, we are programmers while writing the transactions, uh, we have to make sure that we have to follow these acid properties. Got it? Got it. If you don't make sure that uh, acid properties are followed in your code, then database would uh, reach the inconsistent state where reflecting uh, wrong data for other users and even to you also, right? Right. 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 You can see here. Database initial state, and that you are performing some transaction, and on commit the transaction should succeed. Okay. Okay. On yeah. rollback the transaction should fail. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we obtain the transaction object from session right. Begin transaction. Right. Yes. So transaction is an interface that defines unit of work and it maintains the abstraction from the transaction implementation from JTE or JDBC, okay? 
JTA stands for Java Transaction API. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, with your database connectivity. Yeah. And we apply yeah. transaction by using session dot begin transaction. Okay. Yeah. And you can see in transaction there are methods like begin. So transaction begin. That is starts a new transaction. Okay. Yeah. Commit. Of course we have seen commit also which will end the unit of work uh, unless we are using flush mode never. Mm -hmm. This is a different thing. You ignore this. Okay. Commit is nothing but the change whatever you have made to your database are to be done permanently. Yeah. And roll yeah. back. Forces this transaction to roll back, undo. Mm, okay. Yeah. And okay. set timeout. We can set timeout to your transaction also. It sets the transaction timeout for any transaction started by a subsequent call to begin on this. Okay. Okay. Subsequent call to begin in the sense whenever you say say transaction dot begin it means you are generating a new transaction okay okay yeah. so you can set time out for your previous transaction okay mm -hmm. okay and integer some seconds you can mention okay after okay. 10 seconds okay. your transaction should fail got it got it got it then i mean to say in 10 seconds if it is not completed then it has to fail it means got it yeah. Got it. And he is alive. Check whether the transaction is still alive or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Then register synchronization. Uh, registers a user synchronization callback for this transaction. So when you are performing multi-threaded concepts and uh, synchronization, you may be using this method. Mm -hmm. Then you can see was committed and was rolled back. Checks whether okay. the transaction is committed successfully or not. You have to ensure that transaction right. is committed, right? And you also you also have to ensure that the transaction is rolled back if something goes wrong, right? Right. Right. And if you observe, we have been using uh, the configuration session factory, then obtaining a session, then obtaining a transaction from session, then uh, begin transaction, then save the object from in the session then transaction commit, right? Transaction commit, Those are yeah. the regular steps we are using, right? Mm. Right from the first time right. we have been using that, right? The same thing yeah. you, know, you have to mention in try cache. Oh, Got it? Okay. I did that my yeah. in a try cache block and I told you that, it are, that uh, those things are to be mentioned in try, try cache block, right? Mm -hmm. If you right, remember, right. in my first session while executing the sample, I told you, I am not mentioning any try cache blocks. But they are to be mentioned in try block. If something fails, you have to do a uh, rollback. I said, if you remember. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Remember. That's what. That's what. Try block. You have to put okay. the statement, and you can see if something exception happens, if transaction is aborted, some something, then you can see transaction rollback here. Okay. And you need to close your session in finally block, obviously. Mm-hmm. So that's what it is here highlighted. Use this kind of programming style. All right. As we are learning, beginning, uh, I just re uh, written uh, uh, simply as it is to uh, pull the data uh, or to push the data into the database. You need to address the yes. uh, code with uh, uh, exception handling mechanism. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If something is failing, if something is failing, then roll back it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And you can see here. You can see here. Uh, here, some action you are performing, that is saving the object, or updating the object, or inserting the object. Got it? Yeah. Whatever yes, the saving you are done, if some if it is going smoothly, then followed by commit mm -hmm. in the drive log. Mm -hmm. It means if it is going smooth, you commit the changes to the database. Got it? Yeah. Got yes. It. Yeah. If something goes wrong, then exception and roll back it. Got it? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Right. 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 And
so hibernate query language so hibernate query language uh, shall i continue or uh, shall we continue tomorrow it's okay for me it's okay for me too uh, all right just i'll finish this sample and uh, i'll close the session and with this sample you will no, get a lot of assignments you will get a lot of assignments maybe it may take a two problem. pages for you to finish okay no okay problem. and i already introduced a hql hibernate query language and i fetched data uh -huh. from the database and i showed you right yes so you did that's what right. uh, again we are uh, revising it that's it so hibernate okay. query language is same as sql sql structured query language but it does not depend upon any table of the database instead it depends upon the model classes i already highlighted this yeah. point mm -hmm. and in our example also while fetching the data from question i have given right create query yeah. right mm -hmm. from yeah. model over there model class yeah. not the database table okay okay and advantage of sql hibernate query language is database independent it is whatever the database you are using maybe mysql oracle sybase ingress postgres db2 any database yeah. the sql statements that are generated are from hibernate that is why it is independent of any database okay yeah okay and supports polymorphic queries because with we are our main focus is Uh, to persist the java model class to database object right yeah in java model class if you say it is java nothing but it has object orientedness mm -hmm. so we have polymorphism inheritance right right yes. and if you observe we have mapped the inheritance to database tables in our yes. beginning samples yeah that is a employee regular employee contract employee samples do you remember yes yes it means we are mapping inheritance to database where we don't see inheritance in database we do we we, we don't have an inheritance in database database yeah database. but we could map inheritance to database using orm mm -hmm. tool right yes so that's what the uh, this hql supports those polymorphic queries also and easy easy to learn for a java programmer because we are using java related things here yeah okay definitely and uh, in session i used a create query method and i obtained a query right mm, yeah right so that query is nothing but an interface oh okay mm. so it is an object oriented representation of hibernate query okay this query interface is nothing but representing the hibernate query and while yeah. create query if you see while create query observe this line create query i am using an sql query over there from question model class right right yeah. that's what sql query is being represent hibernate query is being represented with that query object okay got it right yeah. got it and if you see on my query on my query list method i invoke which would fetch yeah. the data present in that select query okay yeah okay right right so right so we obtain the query using create query method on session and you can see there are various methods among that method i'll highlight the method which we are already familiar with list method mm -hmm. which is return returns the results of the relation as a list okay okay yeah. so results of a relation means results of the table relation in the sense table okay okay, okay. and you can see execute update execute update so it is used to execute the update or delete query got it dml query yeah, got it hmm uh, dml query particularly update or delete okay okay yeah. suppose you want to perform an insert it is nothing but uh, save right we are saving persist mm, yeah that is nothing but an insert statement being fed inside the hibernate right we have been seeing on console also 
Yeah. So here, execute update is used to work with update and delete query. Okay. Okay. And mm. you can see here set first result. So it specifies the row number from where the record has to be retrieved. You have to uh, go back to your JDBC related concepts, which we executed with uh, batch statement. And I said uh, there are methods like first, next, previous, yeah. last, yeah. got it. Got it, got it. So just uh, refresh those things. You can see set first mm -hmm. result. And you can mention the row number here. I want data from fifth row or second row, tenth row. Yeah. Got it? Okay. I, I set max result up to so and so. That is specifies the number of records. That is, I want five records, ten records. Mm -hmm. Got it? Got yeah. it. And set parameter. We can mention uh, set the value to the JDBC style query using parameters here. That is position and value uh, to insert some data. Byte parameters we have in JDBC, right? Yes. Yeah. So that 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 set parameter, okay? Oh yeah, okay. And set parameter with a name, I mean some string and object, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And this sets the value to a named query parameter, query okay? Parameter. Yeah. Here we use the query parameter with position and here with the name, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Okay. And you can see there are samples here. I want you to work out on these samples. Uh, create query and you can use from model class maybe our question employee address answer any any of the model class okay yeah okay so we got a query and query dot list will give the list right yeah yes and you know well to navigate across the list and uh, fetch the data yeah yes and we have already executed this sample right yes right right and you can see here Example for HQL to get records with a pagination. So what do you mean by pagination? Page. That's first page, second page, third page, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So here you can see, we can mention, so we got the query object, the regular way, create query. Mm -hmm. On that query, mention set first result and set max result. I want the data from fifth and tenth rows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And query dot list them. And this will list only data present in fifth and tenth records. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yeah. Got it. Then Got it. example of SQL update query. So while create query, we have been using from model class. You can write an update mm -hmm. also. Update user set and you can see your parameter name equals to some by uh, what is that name equals to this is colon n colon n okay and here also okay. colon some variable colon right. some variable right. so colon n represents the bind parameter okay yeah I see. Mm -hmm. and here colon some some variable why wow, it's of your choice maybe n or you can put your name also over there uh -huh. it's a variable Byte parameter variable, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. And this user is model class or table. Okay. Model class. Model. I am asking you whether it is a table or model class. It is a table. Model class. For us, it is model class. When you talk about yeah. database, it is a table generally. As we are using HQL, it would be model classes, not the, the tables. Class. I told you, right? Model class, yeah, right? Yeah. And name is a property or the column in the table? Yes. Property in, in property, Java right. and right. yeah. Right. right, 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 absolutely. So you can use that uh, properties also, right? Right. So suppose you are uh, fetching employee, name equals to Emma, you can give, right? And yes, here ID yes. equals to Emma's ID, you can give, right? So that's yeah. what you need to set the bind parameter values. Oh, okay. Set parameter, set parameter, this parameter with this name. Set parameter ID oh. with this. Got it? Got it. 
then okay. execute update is used. Execute update is used. Yeah. Got it? Okay. Yeah, that is. Uh, where execute update is returning an integer value mentioning mm -hmm. how many rows are updated. Got it? Yeah. Got it. And commit. Clear? Clear. Simple, yeah. right? Right. Yes. Fine. Then HQL delete query. You just write a delete from employee model class where ID equals to MS ID you can give or hundred something whatever the ID present in the database which you have inserted. Okay. Okay. And execute update. Mm -hmm. It gets deleted. Okay. Yes. And in HQL we have aggregate functions also. In database SQL, we have aggregate functions like sum, average, minimum, maximum, count, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We have those aggregate functions in SQL also. Okay. You can see here, select sum of salary from employee. Sum of all the okay. salaries, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a select query. And you, while using this, you have to give select sum of salary from employee, okay? Oh and salary God. is the property. Salary is the property, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. EMP model class, right? Model, yeah. Right. And you are firing list to obtain the data and display, mm -hmm. okay? Query dot yeah. list. Okay. okay. And you get the employee object here. Mm -hmm. From yeah. that, employee dot get salary, right? Right. Yeah. And I believe this also you can do that, right? Yeah, we can do that too. Likewise, select minimum salary you can do. So maximum salary, minimum salary mm -hmm. also you can perform. Same thing, same thing, right? right? Likewise, the count of count of also that is number of employees present in the employee table. It gives count of one column you are giving count of ID. Okay. ID is nothing but employee ID. Okay. Okay. Yes. Average salary also you can define, you can display, right? Oh, all right. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8 samples are there to work out. 8 and yesterday's 3 samples. 8 plus 3, around 10, 10 to 11 are there, yeah. right? 11. And of course, yeah. with a, by writing one, one project, you can do all these things in the same project, right? Yeah. You need to get 10 projects, right? Yeah. Right. Mm. So okay. Just comment it uh, in the same uh, same file and uh, describe that and put it uh, for your reference. That's it. Don't create 10 okay. projects for this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because all those are repeated statements, right? And you are very very much familiar with those statements. Yeah. Okay. Fine. 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 And we are uh, almost done with uh, our hibernate things and a few more things that are in due are uh, we can perform filters on the uh, SQL queries which you execute, okay? Okay. I mean where class. And with select mm -hmm. statement we can put where class, right? Where uh, salary is greater than 5000. Got it? Mm-hmm. Are you come okay. again? With the select statements in database, you can okay. mention where clause, right? Where condition? Where? Uh, it means select star from employee whose employee is okay. 5000. Where condition? All right, gotcha. Where, where condition or where clause we say, okay? Yeah, okay. gotcha. Yes, so uh, that where clause. Uh, so like where, like the where condition, it's we call it as filter, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So filter or criteria we say. Okay. Okay. So that criteria you can perform on your queries by using HC, HCQL, that is Hibernate Criteria Query Language. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll see by example. I'll execute this sample. Okay, for you. Okay. Yes. And we have. Hibernate named query. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So we will be writing. Uh, yeah, what is that? Uh, we can write in a select statement or any statement, any any SQL query. We can name it and we can reuse re, reuse it uh, n number of times with the same name. Got it? Okay. Yeah. Got it. And we will see by example. Mm-hmm. Then Hibernate second level caching. By default, the first level cache is enabled. If you remember, we discussed it. Yes. Second level yes. Cache, you, you, mm-hmm. you have to configure it, I told you. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Second level cache and caching. So we will talk about caching. So almost we have one, two, three, so around three to four uh, scenarios, or better say three to four topics are left in Hibernate. So possibly uh, this weekend or maybe another two days in the next week, uh, we can put a full stop. Yeah. And uh, uh, girls, are you uh, going through that uh, word files which I supplied for uh, interview questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Every day I want you to revise those word files. Every day. Every day. Yeah. One hour, revise it. Once you learn yeah, those yeah. word files, you revise them because if you are good at uh, those uh, uh, interview questions related word files and PDFs which I supplied, then you mm-hmm. are done with the job there. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. It's, it becomes easy. Yeah, okay. that's for sure. We are doing our best. Fine, fine, fine. All right. Uh, all right. Then we will see tomorrow with the Hibernate criteria query language and if time permits we will go for named queries also. Okay. okay. And the other day, so tomorrow is Saturday, maybe Sunday, okay, Sunday or Monday. Uh, I am not sure whether I am available on Sunday um, because there are two occasions in this week. One is there is a function at home, second is uh, there is a, my friend's marriage. So oh, okay. I so I may not be available. I I'll inform you. I'll I'll try to plan. Okay. 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 And uh, you can push your uh, assignments uh, uh, in my absence over there. Yes. All right. No worries. Fine. Then. Fine. Fine. All right. Okay. Catch you tomorrow then. Same time. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. I'll email you. Thank you. And uh, start working on this. Okay. All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. See you. See you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Mm, thank you. Bye-bye.